Well, hello everyone. Now, I'm in the van again, and I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it today, because some of you have had specific questions, and I know some of you have been asking to see the drivetrain and some of the power electronics that make it move. Today we will see that, but first I want to answer some, some of the specific questions I've had about it. Now, I've had a lot of people ask what the range is, and I've given you some estimates, and the truth is I don't really know. I haven't really actually driven it that far before, but I think the range probably as it stands right now is probably somewhere around 10 miles. Now, some people have been asking about the motor. The thing is, this van has had a lot of different motors because the truth is this van has been very experimental. And as I said in the last video about the van, it has changed a lot and it probably will still change in the future. The first motor that I put in this van, the first electric motor I put in this van was 10 horsepower and it was four poles. And I tell you the truth, I actually burned up that motor so it was pretty apparent that it wasn't going to work. I actually completely burned it out and I melted the windings, I'm not joking you. So the next motor I got was a 15 horsepower and it was a six pole motor. And you can see that in some of the very first videos of this van that I posted. And that motor actually worked pretty good. It was an aluminum motor and it didn't really weigh all that much. It only weighed about 200 pounds, I think. It was metric frame 160L, just in case you're curious. But it really didn't have enough torque to move the van. So I went from that motor to a 30 horsepower four pole motor. And I drove the van with that and it actually worked really good. But at that point was when the controller that I made actually exploded. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. But the motor that the van has now is actually a 30 horsepower six pole motor. And just to be clear, it is an induction motor. It's an alternating current motor. It's three phase. And that means since it's six poles and with slip, it normally turns at 1,165 RPM, which translates into about 30 miles an hour on the road. So there is no transmission. The electric motor is just connected directly to the drive shaft, which goes right into the differential and I know some of you guys have been anxious you want to see that you've been asking me multiple times so I will show you what that looks like and this is it guys a 30 horsepower industrial induction motor is six poles and it is connected directly to the drive shaft now the drive shaft it does have a slip joint on it so when the rear does move up and down it will have room and yeah that's just it right there the rear reduction ratio is 3.73 to 1 and the motor can make a maximum of about 400 foot pounds pounds feet whatever of torque so it doesn't really give all that much torque at the rear end but it does eliminate the need for the transmission which really helps a lot because the transmission that came with this van wasn't really anything all that spectacular if I'm honest now the motor controller also the inverter is just an ABB ACS 600 it's rated at 55 kilowatts and it can burst up to twice that much and this one has direct torque control. It's not just a regular variable frequency drive, and I'll tell you why that's important in a minute. This cable comes from the battery pack, and this cable goes to the motor. That just connects to the key panel in the front. Check the focus. It's a little bit out. The brown wire there enables the drive. It tells the drive it's okay to start. Then we have a white wire, which is the input signal from the potentiometer that's just connected to the accelerator pedal. And the other white wire, way down here, that chooses whether you want torque mode or speed mode, and I will explain a little bit about that in a minute too and now the batteries 
There are 50 of them. 25 there and 25 there. And they're just regular sealed batteries. AGMs or whatever you want to call them. They are lead acid batteries. And I've had to replace two of them, which is not really a big deal. Because if you haven't got the idea yet, this is all just used stuff. None of it is really brand new. And it's all really cheap, and I didn't really have to pay very much for it. So, those are all together in a big giant series circuit. And so at 12 volts each, there's about 600 volts that goes into the inverter. And it goes up during regenerative braking and down during acceleration. And those are all connected to this box. That's actually really simple. Right there is a half bridge rectifier. And that brown wire there is 240 volts AC, and the blue wire is 240 volts AC. And the red and black is positive and negative. So one side of 240 volts AC goes to the center of those batteries, the midpoint. And then the other side of 240 volts AC goes to that half bridge rectifier. And the positive just goes to the positive of the battery, and the negative goes to the negative of the battery pack. And that contactor, all it really does is just connects the batteries to the motor controller. And then a wire is connected to the coil of that contactor to the ignition switch. So basically whenever I put the key in and turn the van on to start, all it does is engage that contactor. And one more thing back there is the heater that I use for a van. It's a something that we kind of made to work for the van. It has a regular 240 volt AC blower and it has a 5 kilowatt heater while well, when it's using one element it has two elements so it can be series or parallel so it can be two and a half kilowatts, five kilowatts, or ten kilowatts and I usually use five kilowatts to heat the van in the winter. So as you can see right now nothing's really changed all that much and it's all still kind of temporary. I haven't made any permanent plans yet. But, now I want to speak to you for a moment about the drive, the motor controller. Okay, this is what I wanted to tell you about the motor controller. Like I said just earlier that I did make a motor controller for it and it did work for a long time. But eventually it did blow up. Yes, it literally exploded and it was very loud and it almost took out my hearing. But, the new motor con controller that I have is much different. The old motor controller works like a traditional variable frequency drive. And the way those work is kind of simple. Basically, they output a given voltage for every frequency that you want the motor to run at. So say for example, at 60 Hz it would output 240 volts to run your induction motor. And at 30 Hz it would output half that, 120 volts. So that kind of limits you. That means that when you need peak torque from the motor, you can't have it at the low end because then you're only getting a very small voltage. You can only get it at the high end. But you cannot reach the high end before you pass the low end because obviously it takes time for a vehicle to accelerate. So the way around this is to increase the voltage at the low end. So you get more torque to get the vehicle moving up to the high end speed. But the only problem with this is when regenerative braking occurs, when you go to slow down, and if the batteries are full, if there's a very high voltage on the battery, then that means that you've got peak torque at a very low speed. So when you're going slowly and slowing down, you're still putting in more energy than the battery can hold. And eventually that will make the voltage rise up so greatly that the variable frequency drive will shut off to try to protect itself. So the other motor controller that I had did that. and when I was driving it, it was okay for the most part, but going down the hills was really, well, it was kind of terrifying, and it scared me half to death, and eventually what I thought was going to happen did happen, and it did blow up. Because, see, the thing is, when you are going down the hill, and the battery voltage gets high, then it wants to turn off very quickly, and when you turn off any inverter or anything that carries a very large current too quickly, then you know what happens. The voltage rises up too high, and then the IGBTs break down and they actually explode, and which is what happened. So this is why the new motor controller is different. 
it doesn't use the same concept of a base frequency and will hit this voltage at this frequency. Well, let's just say it does, but it's not fixed. See, with the regular old one, you can only set it at one point and then drive it. You, it cannot be adjusted in real time. But with a new controller, that's all adjusted in real time. So if we need a lot of torque to get it going, it's there when we need it. And then when we want to just roll, it just kind of takes it away. And if we command it to start going faster again, then it brings that torque back. So the voltage and the current are always changing. They're never really fixed at one frequency or one speed. So that means not only will it save itself from, from blowing up if the voltage gets too high by reducing the torque. So when the voltage gets too high at the battery, then it just kind of turns the torque down by reducing the uh, base frequency, which I guess you can't really say that, but you get the idea. And it also increases efficiency because when we don't need all that voltage, then it's not there. It just simply turns the torque down. So that really makes it kind of like the only acceptable solution if you want to have an electric car. Now, it's not just DTC that does this. It's just what's in the ABB drives. They have it. And it makes it easy. There are other drives that you can buy that do this. Not exactly DTC, but there's... um. There's sensored vector control and there's field oriented control and things like that that adjust the voltage and current at the motor with regard to what you want to do and not just on a, uh, a linear ramp, I should say, not on just a fixed pattern that you program in once. It changes all the time. So, now that the motor controller issue is sorted out, there's always the issue of the motor itself and exactly why I went with the motor going directly to the drive shaft. And as you know, like I've said before, it means there's no transmission and there are no clutches to burn out or anything like that. But that does, in effect, reduce the overall possible torque. But there is a big issue with that because you see the electric motor that I have now, the torque that it can output would actually destroy the original transmission that was in this van. So the electric motor actually does output more torque than the original V8 that was in the van. And the other thing too, the transmission wasn't very reliable because it went out and, you know, new transmissions go out. And it's one of those, it's kind of, it's just a hassle. And then you have to pay a very large amount of money for it. And I know everybody says the argument about, you know, the batteries go out too. And that's true, but the difference is, see, I can get the batteries scrap and they are really cheap when they're scrap and I can do the repair myself but enough about that see the, the big thing about the transmission is it's not just the the clutches wearing out and the transmission in general wearing out it's also the efficiency loss that you get with it so if you go if you have a gearbox for any transmission and you have a high gear ratio then that means that you do get more torque out but then the efficiency goes down because for a high gear ratio, that means the output gear is kind of big and the input gear is kind of small. So that means the input gear is going to have to turn really fast to get up to a high speed, which is fine, but it wastes energy because of all the teeth meshing. And they, they mesh at a very high speed, and then they have to be lubricated. So, in essence, that puts a lot of stress on whatever gearbox that you choose to use, and it can make the oil hot and cause it to break down. But with this system, the rear end has a relatively low ratio. That means the motor has to make a lot of torque, which is okay to an extent because a bigger electric motor makes more torque and a bigger one is also a little bit more efficient. It might weigh a little bit more, but the efficiency goes up. And that means we won't have to implement some kind of exotic cooling system to cool it because if it's bigger, then it means it has more surface area and it's easy to keep it cool so the rear end in the van is going to be a lot more rugged just by design than a transmission would be and it would be easier just from my perspective and my situation to get a bigger electric motor and hook it to the rear drive shaft and that's also why I go for a six pole motor a six pole motor turns slower that means just by that fact alone if you have the same power and it's turning slower then you get more torque so Speed isn't really a high priority for the van. It's nice to have it go fast, but it's more important that it actually gets going and it has a lot of torque. So, 
that's why I choose a six pole motor. It's a little bit less common than a four pole motor, but then that means we don't actually need to have any kind of gear reduction or gearbox intermittent between the motor and the dry shaft. And well, guys, I think that's kind of I think that's kind of about it. Um, anything else about the van? The the battery that runs the 12 volt system is just charged by a power supply that just runs when the van's plugged in. The heater runs when the van's plugged in and well of course if you want it. It has a thermostat so you can set whatever temperature you want and usually that's what I do and it van stays pretty warm when you're driving it. Um, yeah the batteries are used, everything's used and it was all really low cost and nothing's permanent like I said. It's changed a lot since I first had it. It's been about two years now since I've made it electric and everything's changed. It's gone through two controllers and four motors and it's actually gone through two battery packs. The first one didn't really go out. It was just very, very, very small. So I just got a bigger one for it. And I do have a lot of plans for it. I can't tell you everything because you might think I'm crazy. <laughs> but as it stands now, yeah, it's about 55 kilowatts. It can do two times that peak and it can probably go about 10 miles and I have had it up to 50 miles an hour it can do that pretty easily actually which is surprising to me I'm still kinda surprised the whole thing works but in the future hopefully there will be changes you know I don't really have a lot of money to put into the van project but eventually I do want to make it you know more usable because the way it is right now it's not I mean it, I can use it for some things but a lot of things I can't because it just simply doesn't have the battery capacity. That's the biggest thing is the batteries. It's always the batteries. But I don't think there's anything else I can really tell you. But ask me questions and refresh my memory if you want to know anything else. And I'll make a video for you. And for now, that's all. I'll show you the drivetrain in motion and then I'll see you later. Alright guys, first I'm going to show you torque mode. In torque mode, it doesn't really pay any attention to the speed that the motor is turning. It just only pays attention to the torque. So basically, it's kind of like an automatic transmission. When you push on it, you get more torque, and when you let off, you just coast, and it doesn't actively brake or regenerative brake. I'll show you that one. Yeah, and that's at zero throttle position. Okay, now I want to show you speed mode, where it tracks the motor speed. So when you are using the pedal, you're giving it a speed command, and it makes the necessary adjustments in torque to make the speed that you requested possible. So that means when we take our foot off, we're telling it to go zero, and it will activate regenerative braking. Well, that's about it for this one, guys. If you want to see anything else, you just let me know. 
Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.